Hey there, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is going to be on inflammation and health. So inflammation is paramount to health, I mean, essentially keeping inflammation at bay. So inflammation essentially is your body's ability to try to heal. When we have excessive inflammation like an autoimmune disease or uh, with chronic injury or with um, stress via dietary and lifestyle issues, inflammation can get out of control and that healing mechanism like if you get a bruise, becomes excessive and our body begins to break down more than it actually builds up. So that inflammation process is meant for like one step backwards, two step forwards kind of thing. We're stepping backwards when we're in pain and we're sore and we're swollen, but we're stepping forward as we heal. And when that inflammatory process goes out of control, we break down essentially three steps backwards, one step forward. So we're on a path to accelerated essentially accelerated um, inflammation or degeneration, if you will. So what is inflammation? Well, essentially, um, the inflammation reaction is made up of, of, of immune uh, cells, such as cytokines and interleukins, nuclear factor, kappa beta, TNF alpha. These are things that are trying to break down so we can recycle and then clean things back up. These are the main compounds that are involved in inflammatory reactions. Again, we can also look at C-reactive protein in there as well. These are markers we can actually test in blood, and we can see if we have excessive levels of inflammation. And inflammation is correlated with every disease out there, so we really want to do our best to make sure we're in an anti-inflammatory state. In other words, we have our hormone building blocks. When we're pro-inflammation, when we're in that accelerated state, our hormone building blocks essentially can go in one or two directions. They can either be like water on the fire, helps put out the inflammation, or it can be like the carpenters building up the house. And essentially what's happening is as if our body is putting out the fire, putting out the inflammation, it's acting like water. So what starts to happen is we start having more of our hormone building blocks going towards the water or the stress hormones, if you will, and we have less going towards regeneration. So we actually have our regeneration hormones are dropping down while our stress hormones are increasing. And this is a really important phenomenon that most people don't quite understand. And when we start having adrenal fatigue, this is the same phenomenon that's happening with adrenal fatigue. Our hormones are going towards the water to put out the fire. Right? And this is vitally important because we need to be in an anabolic state so we can heal. So if you're in pain, excessively sore, brain fog, fatigue, chronic infections, all of these, this physiological process is happening. And over here we have a phenomenon known as allostatic load. Allostatic load is, is the analogy I give of the stress bucket where that bucket is being full of all of our physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. Now. All chronic degenerative disease, excessive inflammation is all correlated with excessive allostatic load. Our stress bucket is excessively full. And what that means is when that bucket's full, our hormone building blocks, and again, just in case anyone isn't aware of this, our hormone building blocks actually come from cholesterol. So this is important because if we're not eating the right uh, building blocks or for fat phobic or vegetarian, vegan, it's going to be a hard time to get our, the building blocks in our body that we need. So again, when our allostatic load is out of balance, this whole physiological process is happening here. Increased stress hormones, our building blocks are going to be the water on the fire versus the carpenters building the house back up. Now, when this happens, there's a lot of literature in the scientific database about thyroid function and inflammation. We have our active thyroid hormone here, which is T3. T4 gets converted to T3. T3 is our active thyroid hormone. As we're inflamed over time, as time goes on, our thyroid hormone actually drops as inflammation increases. So inflammation increases in this direction. That's inflammation getting higher. We start seeing our thyroid hormone drop. And that's correlated time and time again in the scientific literature. And we know it correlates with autoimmune disease. Actually, 90% of all thyroid conditions are autoimmune in nature, 90%. Some say a little less, some say 90%, but again, this is Hashimoto's or Graves. So autoimmune thyroid disorder. 
This is vitally important because the whole processes that's happening above is our hormone building blocks are going towards stress hormones. This is driving adrenal fatigue, and this is driving our thyroid hormone down in a negative direction. Again, chronic injuries, car accidents, sports injuries, chronic pain, too much exercise, too much excessive exercise aerobically and or CrossFit, depending on who you are. Menopause. If we're in a menopausal state and our hormones are so low, that can easily put us in a pro-inflammatory state because some of the estrogens like estriol can be anti-inflammatory, cardioprotective, and anti-cancer as well. So some women, they go into menopause too early because their adrenals are fatigued. Why are they fatigued? Because this whole process above is happening. Hormones are going towards the stress side and away from the regeneration side. Also infections. There's a handful of infections in the scientific literature that correlate with this, especially thyroid disease. We have three off the bat. We have Yersinia enterocolitica. Yersinia is one. We have H. pylori is another one. And we also have Lyme disease. Those are a couple right off the bat that can easily cause excessive inflammation and cause our body to break down faster than we build up. So again, everyone has the right to be infection free. So if we have excessive inflammation and you're not quite sure, typically that involves an infection. Other parasites can also contribute like blastocystis hominis potentially. So if you've got a lot of these things already addressed, that's good. If there's a couple other things that's not quite addressed yet, more than likely it's in with the infection connection side of the, of the fence there. So look a little deeper. If you want more information, scroll down below the video. You'll see my newsletter. Feel free and subscribe there, as well as my thyroid and female hormone video series. And again, if you want to get to the next step in your health and figure out what blocks are missing here, feel free and subscribe below. Thanks. This is Dr. Justin signing off. More videos will be coming soon. Thanks.